Hi everyone, uh, this time I'm going to talk to you about an American photographer called Keith Dotson and to me he's best known um, and most loved because of his beautiful photographs of nature. Now you can see on the screen here a photograph of Dotson with his camera zooming in on something of great importance and I would bet that, that thing of great importance to Dotson might not at first appear important at all to anyone else, but through his photographing of that thing, whatever it might be, he elevates their significance through his understanding of beauty. So when we look at photographs like the one in the square crop on the screen now, we're looking at an image in which we see something that ultimately is a bit rotten, it's a bit old and it's on its way out, it's a dead flower head, it's dying back and yet here we are looking at it as if it is something of extraordinary significance. Now Dotson gives us that, he leads us to that conclusion by using very careful and clever visual devices. So for example he's cropped to a square that manages to um, elevate the sense of the shape of the flower what else is happening is that we are looking at a background that's been blurred out and our focus is entirely on the foreground with that flower and as such we are in that flower space. We're not distracted by anything else, we're not even aware really of anything else and in addition to those things we're also looking at a really really delicate balance between tone and texture and that's something that recurs in his work of nature time and time again. So Dotson uh, lives in the US, he's a living artist, he's someone that we can access really easily, he's got a brilliant website that's um, really easy to navigate and there's heaps of information on it. I would urge you to go and look at it and also learn some interesting facts, some fun facts about Keith Dotson. Um, I was surprised to, to read that a lot of his photographs end up on the walls of the studio sets showing the interiors of um, sitcom houses for example or, or houses that we might see in drama TV shows so there are prints of his on the wall in a bedroom in Grey's Anatomy for example and there are many other instances uh, in films as well where on the walls you might see some beautiful Keith Dotson photographs and I think that's a rather amusing and, and lovely way to um, get your photographs out into the world because with the internet, of course, anyone can look at photographs from anywhere at any time. But there's a whole other layer of seeing work that is also part of an incidental scene of someone else's choices about what is beautiful. Um, I want to also guide your attention to the similarities between what Dotson does and also to the work of Blosfeldt and Imogen Cunningham two photographers that we've already studied at uh, this term. And I want you to think when you look at the work of Dotson, how you would compare to Blosfeldt and Cunningham. There are obvious similarities, that first image on the far side of the slide now. You know, we're looking at a, a, a leaf that has been given its own authority again within the frame. It's got some space around it, it's isolated. And though it doesn't have the, the plain or empty background, in the way that Blosfeldt might have shot, we still are looking at something that's thrown forward into our um, space of understanding. And that's a really, really special space that we all must be aware of as photographers, is that when we guide someone's focus to something so intensely or intently, we give that person the chance to look at something that they otherwise might miss. How many of us walk past things like fallen leaves on the ground every day and we don't pay any attention to them at all? And yet here we are looking intently and intensely about a shape, a form, a detail that makes something so ordinary incredibly beautiful. And again, that's also a theme that recurs for us when we look at nature, that we can be so complacent about something that's so extraordinary. And the other image we can see, for me at least, there are definite likenesses to Imogen Cunningham's work. We've got that black space around the top edge. We've got the the close zoom so we feel like we're entering the, the kind of inner sanctum of the leaf um, and something in both of them that I want us to pay special attention to this time are those water droplets. 
Now water droplets are a really useful foil for any photographer who wants to play with light because the water itself has a reflective quality. And when we look at the reflective quality in these photographs, we're seeing a device that allows us to pitch between lightest, brightest points of tone and those dark depths at the very, very blackest end, darkest end of the spectrum, tonal spectrum. And also I want you to think, and it's written there for you to consider, which visual element is the most obvious? And perhaps amongst you, we'll have lots of different answers that we could talk about. So for me, in that top image, I am struck most by the, the delicate nature of the detail, the texture. Whereas in the other image, though there is detail and a sense of texture, I'm struck by the actual shape because it's so strong. It's a very powerful shape. It's been given that authority within the frame. Um, and also to think then what sense is heightened. Now, of course, as photographers, we're engaged with sight um, all the time. It's our, it's our key sense. But I wonder what it would be like if we were to imagine also touch what these things would feel like. Now, I know because they're covered in the water droplets, to think of them as textural is a bit disrupted by the water because we know if we touch them that that scene would change forever because the water would become um, disturbed and it would move about. It's fluid. But nonetheless, I get such a strong sense of what it would be like to feel the surface of these leaves, to, to feel the very, very delicate yet strong seeming ridges of the veins, for example. And as I said, Dotson's website is a brilliant resource. There's so much information on it. Um, and I would particularly urge you to have a look at his um, methods uh, page. He was asked what kinds of techniques and methods or equipment does he use when he makes his photographs in, a, I think, a magazine interview. And he's taken the whole excerpt and he's put it on his website for us to read. And it's very interesting seeing the kinds of resources that he has at, at his disposal. And in so many ways, they're not that different to what we can use. But the other thing I love about the website is there's an excellent biographical um, introduction to him. And there's lots of writing on it that's very informative about how Dotson himself sees not just his work, but before that, how he sees nature. And I've written here, taken straight from the website, um, he believes the landscape has a spirit that's shaped by its aesthetics, weather, geography, topography, history and human activity. And of course, when he writes about human activity, we are counted in that. We are human activity within the landscape. Um, but the fact that he believes the landscape has a spirit also says something to us about the significance of nature to Dotson. And I think a very um, lovely quality in his work is that by looking at his photographs, I can see someone who cares deeply about nature. I can see someone through their photographs who loves what they see. And I've talked about this before um, when we were looking at Imogen Cunningham. Imogen Cunningham loved her subjects. When she photographed those succulents, though they were ordinary, to her they were also extremely beautiful. And with Dotson's work, there's that similar sense that here is someone who really cares about what he sees, whether it's a fallen leaf on the ground or a half dead flower, makes no difference because what he sees is something that has an incredible significance, a value, a value of beauty. Um, and I would add now, just to give a bit of context also to the wider theme of a sense of place nature for our GCSE studies, that there's never been a more relevant time for us to talk about nature. There's never been a more relevant time to understand or get to grips why we might photograph elements of nature in order to elevate their importance or presence in the minds of our viewers. If we think about how our environment has suffered because of us, it might also be interesting to balance 
whether we could ever be cruel to an environment or to nature after really seeing it. And that sounds simple and obvious, but I wonder how many of us haven't really paid attention to the abundance of beauty we see in the natural world. To me, it would be even harder than before, after viewing the photographs of someone like Dotson, to go and trudge mindlessly across a field of wildflowers. It would be harder for me to not think or be more conscious when um, out walking in the forest, for example, not just to stop and pick up some litter, because I'd maybe engaged uh, in a more active way with what being in that natural environment means. And isn't it ironic that sometimes through something that is in itself actually a dead art, because the moment is stopped and gone in photographs as we know, that we engage with something that is so alive. Now, those of you for this week's task, which I'm just about to explain in a second, who really want to stretch and challenge and engage with this topic, I would like you to start thinking and writing and talking to each other more about the role of nature in our lives now. And with the the fame of someone like Greta Thunberg and um, our sense that there's an urgency to saving the planet, there's also a sense with the COVID-19 pandemic that we want to preserve and take care of our planet. And as humans, we have to become perhaps more thoughtful, not just with how we relate to each other, but how we relate to the natural spaces we occupy. Um, so this week, the photographs you're going to make are going to draw upon inspiration from Dotson. If you look at the scene here, you've got my usual setup shot, so you can see my extremely uh, ordinary uh, kitchen corner with my plants and the bean bag. Uh, that's my setup. I use natural light to do this shoot. It was actually um, a very easy shoot to do. I needed hardly anything. I just needed plants. I needed light. Not fancy light rigs, nothing, just natural light. And I needed some water. So you can see in the two shots I've selected there, I've uh, I used one of my plant sprayers. I sprayed the, the surface of the leaves with some water. It's so, so simple. If you don't have a spray, then you can just take your hand, dip it in some water and flick it onto the surface of the leaves you want to photograph. And then I got right in close to the plant. Now I have two plants. You can see one of them behind me now. It's a big uh, cheese plant. And then I have another smaller uh, fig plant, fig tree plant. I, I focused on the leaves of the, of the fig tree plant I focused on especially those water droplets. And then what happened was through the shift in focus, everything that's in the background blurs away. Now that's a stretch and challenge element for you. And I don't know if you're gonna be shooting this on your phones or if you're going to actually be using your um, DSLRs. But whatever you shoot on, I want you to think that you can throw the background out. You can blur it away so that whatever is in that foreground is going to become important. It's going to be so much more important to the viewer to be up close to something they can see in hyper detail. In post-production, uh, really the only thing I did was I changed the, the contrast and what happened there was it allowed the, the wall space to become bright white as well as some of the reflected light spots on the water droplets. And to me that gave a good sense of framing um, it created not a crisp line because the leaves in the background are blurred out, but it definitely created a, an additional element of space next to the plant that in itself contrasted and threw forward uh, what I wanted the viewer to look at. So your task exactly as I want you to do it. As before, I would like you to produce a PowerPoint um, so that I can see your work digitally when we're not together in school 
Um, and it says there, I'll read it for you, create a PowerPoint, select and include four of your highest quality photographs from a shoot in which you combine the styles of Blossfeld, Cunningham and Dotson, focusing on visual elements to include tone, high contrast, textural detail, position within the frame, water and reflective points. And as you have done already with Cunningham, and some of you who were working really, really well also did this anyway for Blossfeld. I want you to write a research slide on Dotson. As I said, he's got a brilliant website. You can have a look at that and you can write heaps of stuff in response. And I'd like you to compare his work to your own and also that of Blossfeld and Cunningham. For stretch and challenge, again, this class, you're brilliant. I know there'll be lots of you who'll want more. So I would like you to experiment really obviously with depth of field, to shoot with specific focal ranges where the background or other selected areas is going to be blurred away, giving that leaf or that flower head or whatever it is you're going to photograph from nature the authority within the frame. And of course all of this, as usual, is about us drawing attention to something that we enjoy looking at. Isn't it funny that through looking, things that we've previously glossed over, not paid attention to or forgotten about, become so significant and special? And I think, for me, someone like Dotson is drawing our attention to beauty in a way that makes it unavoidable in the world around us as well. So, good luck, E9, and I look forward to seeing your beautiful work.